welcome back friends in this video tutorial we'll be talking about biodiesel production okay so we've been talking about uh, different assays and techniques biodiesel is one of the new ideas of uh, producing the diesel using the materials from animal source or plant source directly and uh, as it involves uh, so many different animal wastes as well as the plant sources it is uh, not that much costly so it's a kind of cost effective way to produce diesel and we all know that diesel is a hugely important fuel for us because a uh, lot of uh, vehicles are nowadays carry diesel as the source of uh, their fuel or energy so in this case uh, in this particular video i'm just focusing on the process of how we prepare biodiesel you know uh, the production of biodiesel uh, when we talk about there are two different aspects of that one is uh, the aspect of producing biodiesel in uh, lab scale that is the pilot scale in very small amount in the laboratories for testing and checking different things uh, or for research purpose another thing is also there that is uh, the production of biodiesel in in huge amount uh, for uh, you know it's a commercial value applications so here i'm going to talk about the different approaches and the basic principles behind how we produce biodiesel okay that's the basic principles that's it so in this case, we'll be looking the process that can be used in both lab-based processes as well as the commercial processes. But for the commercial use, you need to uh, use a different approach than the lab approaches. So normally, uh, for the production of biodiesel, in every case of production, we need some sort of, you know, uh, the basic raw materials. Raw materials. And the raw materials that we use for the production of biodiesel as i told you either from the animal source or for, from the plant source now if it's from the animal source it is the fat animal fat animal body fat that we use you know and if it's a plant source then it could be the oil the plant oil that we see the seed oil normally okay? or edible oil that we use that come from the plant okay for example the soy oil or the chana or the mustard oil uh, like, like that olive oil these are the examples so these are acting as a raw material for making biodiesel okay but for any other catalytic reactions uh, we need a raw material along with that we need some ex sub substitute material that will help them to develop into the product so if this is the substrate you also need some other materials for example we need methanol because methanol will interact with either animal fat or the plant oil okay and that will help to generate the biodiesel for us so methanol as well as the source of either animal fat or the plant oil which is also a type of fat as you know and you know why because why we choose fat because you know fat consisting of two different things glycerol and normal fatty acid that is the backbone of a fat you know if we look the basic type of fat that is triacylglycerol or TAG it is composed of glycerol and fatty acids okay three fatty acids and one glycerol backbone that will make the triacylglycerol type of fats so you know here also we need this triacylglycerol type so we use this basic fat materials so you know from there if we if we break this fatty acid chains down because these are complete hydrocarbon chains because fat contains a lot of hydrocarbon chains it will develop into some hydrocarbon rich fuel and that is the diesel that we are talking about so what we need to do we need to separate this glycerol backbone from the hydrocarbon chain right that's our idea so after completion of this process we will generate two different things we will generate the glycerol backbone that is the glycerol itself which we can convert them into glycerine on the other hand we will also get the hydrocarbon chain which is biodiesel and for that we need methanol to interact with this fat along with that we also need two other molecules uh, we also need uh, you know uh, a catalyst to for for making this reaction happen and that catalyst that acts here is koh or potassium hydroxide that act as the catalyst okay so potassium hydroxide work as the catalyst 
to convert this reaction so now let's talk about the process in more details okay now let me erase some of the stuff and then begin with it let's start with there are different chambers for this reaction to occur properly if we begin with this one the first chamber that we know of is known as the mixing chamber which is let's say this one this is the mixing chamber where we mix all our raw materials together the second chamber which is adjacent to the mixing chamber is the reaction chamber which is the heart of this complete biodiesel production unit this is the reaction chamber where the actual reaction of making biodiesel take place and that is known as transesterification it's known as transesterification reaction okay so we begin with this then we have the heart of the reaction is reactor chamber and then after that we have the separator chamber Draw it like this column. It's a separator chamber, and in the separator is also known as purifier because the biodiesel that is produced in the reaction center we need to purify it, and separator does the purification. And after the separation is complete, we have our biodiesel. We have our biodiesel produced that we can use. So if this is the basic schematic of how the those all components align now let's begin with the process itself and the process involves in the first thing that is addition of this raw material so what we do is start with the raw material we add the raw material in the mixing chamber so in the mixing chamber we add the raw material this is the first thing second thing we also add methanol we also add methanol this is the second thing the first the fat then the methanol we add them then we also add sulfuric acid also add sulfuric acid in it so this is the third thing that we add okay so we add fat methanol and sulfuric acid together and sulfuric acid helps the methanol and this fat to mix with each other very well okay so this is the first step of mixing everything in the first chamber once the mixing is done then the mixed components are transferred to the reaction center that is the reactor so it will be transferred to the reactor this is the second step of the reaction so once this material are transferred to the reactor because you know in the mixing chamber we need to mix them thoroughly that's the idea because we have this blender thing the paddle like thing blender it rotates and mix okay then these things are inside the reactor and in the reactor we add methanol along with methanol we also add the catalyst that is koh we add them together again okay in some cases in some reactions also you will see in the first mixing chamber they don't add methanol instead they add sulfuric acid and fat only there okay now here once everything is put inside this reactor where you have methanol koh added and the fat is also present so the three major materials which are involved together and they will do the job because k once you add koh it will facilitate the reaction and the production of biodiesel so here after this process is done the biodiesel is produced the crude biodiesel is produced which is also containing some methanol content which also contain uh, some other uh, glycerol backbone components so it's a impure biodiesel that is produced now that biodiesel is brought from this chamber to this separator now in the separator the job of separator is that there are two different sensors put inside the separator those sensors sense two different gradients one is that you know the glycerol that settles down to the bottom while the diesel content floats on the top so here if you see the diesel content will float here on this top and at the bottom 
we will find the glycerol. Obviously, the diesels will be produced more than the glycerol is placed on to the bottom. This is the glycerol content. And these two, these two sensors help this distinguishing to possible. Okay. And then once this thing is produced, then we have another counter chamber attached to it. We definitely need another counter chamber attached. That counter chamber deal with this glycerin. Okay. Let's say from here. This counter chamber will drag all the glycerol that is produced. All the glycerol that is produced. So now this chamber contains glycerol where we will add some other molecules and convert them into glycerin. Okay, we convert them into glycerin. On the other hand, the other chamber will take rest of the biodiesel content and it will be further purified. It will be further purified before taking it and using it. Okay, Because this is also important. So once biodiesel is produced, we separate them and after the separation we get a layer of glycerol to the bottom, we get a layer of biodiesel to the top. We take the biodiesel out, we purify it and then we use it as a biodiesel, as a fuel, as an energy source. On the other hand, from the bottom, we also take out the glycerol, we convert them into glycerin, we also use that. Okay. Now, during the purification of glycerin from the glycerol, because you know this glycerol will also contain some methanol. So, what happens here during the purification of glycerol, some methanol also produced or some methanol related byproducts also generated. Now, those methanol attached byproducts that are generated can be used as you know fertilizer in the field so that things can be done so this in a sense is a production of biodiesel okay so we start with uh, animal fat or plant fat that is the raw material then we add methanol to it we add the potassium hydroxide to it and then it converts the fat content into biodiesel and as well as glycerol. So once the glycerol is produced, we take them out, biodiesel we also take them out, we purify them in two separate chains, two separate uh, dimension and we get our products. So this in a sense is how we produce biodiesel and I hope this video helps you to understand uh, the biodiesel production. Now why biodiesel is important as I told you, the source is uh, something like plant uh, materials or the source is also animal waste like fat okay from the body so this could be a good way to restore the situations like like using some waste materials there so the cost will also be nominal as well as there's a good way to develop some diesel which is energy source we can use as a vehicle to fuel okay so that's why uh, it is an important technique and uh, it's being done uh, for quite a long time now and we've been producing biodiesel also Okay. So, you can check them out in different stores, you can get some of the biodiesels because it has been suppliers out there in, uh, in different countries in the world uh, including India. So that is it, uh, if you like the video please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to get more videos and definitely share this video with your friends. Thank you.